Right, so it's finally time to actually start inserting and creating instruments and making music. Now, I'm integrating the basics of time, tempo and uh, time signature into this first tutorial about creating drums and rhythm because it all fits in very nicely and it'll give us a nice foundation for making things in the rest of our track. The first thing we're going to do is come over to this track section, right click and you can see that we can insert different things. If we insert a new track, then it'll insert a track that we can mold into the kind of thing that we want to use. And if we go insert virtual instruments on a new track, what Reaper will do is do all of the routing and configuration so that the instrument that we insert onto the track will accept MIDI input and will output audio. We could do that manually, but there's no point when there's a shortcut like this. So we click and we get to this page. Now what you'll see when you first start up is this all plugins. In this list, there are some plugins that I've got that are outside of this course and there are some plugins that Reaper installs automatically. Let's just have a quick look at the different types of plugins. Rewire is a way of making two different pieces of software talk to each other in the background. And we're not going to be using that at all in this and you may not even see uh, rewire in your list. AU is audio unit and it's Apple's own way of doing things. It's its own plugin system. If you're on Windows, you won't see audio units. Uh, if we scroll down, we can see there's a lot. AUI is an audio unit that's defined as an instrument um, and it's as simple as that. VST stands for Virtual Studio Technology and it's available for Mac and Windows. So if you're on Windows, this will be the one that you use. And if you're on Mac, it will sometimes be the one that you use. And we'll go into that in a second. VSTi, as you can see here, is again, VST instrument. And then we come down and we end up with these JS ones. And they're JavaScript. And Reaper has an extensive uh, scripting system. And it means that some of the things that Reaper can do are plugin based and some of them are the core reaper program and these javascript ones are scripts that harness some of reaper's core features without actually needing to be a plugin so they can be handy as well but we're not going to be using them much in our course and then we come down and you can see there are just loads and loads and loads of js plugins this list is a bit cumbersome and it can be frustrating if you just want to jump straight in to create your own instruments or effects. So if you come over to this side here, right click, you can create a new folder. And as you can see, I've created a folder that's called instruments and a folder that's called effects. And in here, I've got our master list that we're going to be using for this course. Now in the description, uh, we've got the recommended folder set up, but you can do whatever you like with these. Now, as you can see, some of the instruments that I'm using are AUI and some of them are VSTi. If you're on Windows, you need to use the VSTi for all of them. And if you're on Mac, as I am, you might wonder why you choose either one or the other. Now, if we go back to all plugins again, <clears throat> what I'm going to be using is Independence Free, which is a sampler. So if I find that in the VST section, which is uh, IJK, there we go, um, it's here. Now I've renamed Independence by right clicking it and renaming it just to make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Um, but by default, you'll see that it's got its name, who made it, and you'll also see that it's got its outputs. And on Mac, the AU version of Independence Free only supports a stereo output whereas the VSTi version supports multiple outputs and it means that we can send different sounds from the same instrument to different audio tracks. And that will come in handy in a later tutorial and we'll go through that then. But for now, we want to in, uh, install the VSTi independent free with the multiple outputs into our project. So we'll double click it and it will ask us if we want to build routing for all of the outputs that independence is capable of. And we don't want to do that now because we can set it up manually later. And as you can see, 
he plans to import lots and lots and lots of channels and it'll fill up our mixer and it'll be largely useless and it will uh, be a waste of screen space. So we're just going to go no for now. Wait for it to load up and here we are. Now we can get rid of this track container folder and just take a look at independence free, which is a sampler.